I'm Michelle Lyons. I'm the curator at the NIH Stunton Museum. We're part of the Office of NIH History. And this is Hank Grassa, who is the other half of our team. He is our exhibit content developer and designer. Today we're going to be showing you some objects from an exhibit which will be opening up by the end of March on the development of artificial heart valves. NIH became a huge center uh, in the heart valve evolution um, because the operating facility had the ability to capture data in a way that no one else could. The, um, the surgeons of the time remarked that they could do any catheterization process right during a, um, an operation. So models were sent here, different kinds of prototypes uh, from all over to see how well they held up and, and how well they were relatively performing. Nina Braunwald developed this. It's a mitral valve. It's made out of polyurethane. Braunwald was significant because she was the first woman thoracic surgeon. When she designed it, she designed it to mimic a natural heart valve. So you see it has a little slit in the middle so it can open up and close just like a a real heart valve does. It was situated in the heart using the, um, the Dacron ties. It was the first mitral valve successfully implanted in a human in uh, 1960. The patient lived for a little over a month, but it proved that uh, that valve could be successfully replaced. These are an example of a ball and cage valve um, what is unique is that to make them less thrombogenic or to generate less uh, blood clots, um, uh, Dr. Braunwald would sew a, f a fabric covering over the metal stents that hold the ball in place, the cage. This valve, the Reese Hancock, it is a valve from a pig, porcine valve, that is stretched over stents uh, that hold it in position so that it can be installed with a sewing ring. The current day uh, research might best be that of uh, Dr. Keith Horvath. Um, his research is in the use of a um, self-expanding stent um, to which he sews a porcine or pork or pig valve. The flexible stent is a design uh, that uh, springs open to be a structural support but collapses uh, to allow it to be threaded through a catheter. In order to get from a large diameter of the expanded stent with the valve attached to the small diameter required to go through the catheter, this unique little apparatus was designed to collapse the diameter. Uh, you press down on the arm to slowly decrease the opening within this container. So when you, you thread the stent and, and valve inside um, and then compress it in order to uh, reduce its diameter for use. The other part that is remarkable about Dr. Horvath's work is the use of a real-time MRI uh, to be able to see uh, exact and measure exact sizes of valves um, and the details uh, as he's operating. 